Persona 3 is the title that served as the precedent to modern Persona titles. While it may still suffer from some last generation game design, it is still fondly remembered. Of the modern Persona games, Persona 3 is the one with the darkest story and themes. With its many analogs to Greek mythology and exploration of themes like death, the game is also filled to the brim with symbols. So in this video, we will be taking a look at some of these symbols, specifically the persona of the main cast. What is the mythological figure attached to each character and how does the figure's story relate to the character? I have to add a note here though. When I do one of these Persona symbolism videos, I take a look at many websites to find as many interpretations of the mythological figure that I can. This helps me get a broader view and see the connections between the mythological figure and the character. But in the case of Persona 3, much of the work was already done for me. Many of the points made came from a walkthrough I found on GameFacts.com written by Daniel Akaba or Misfit119. The guide included short character descriptions for the main cast, a brief background on their respective personas, and the writer's interpretations on how the two are connected. It was this guide that got me thinking more deeply of the imagery and symbolism in Persona. I'll attach a link to the walkthrough in the video description. As always, this will contain discussions for the story events of Persona 3. If you don't want any spoilers, then please head out now. This is your only warning. Also, I'm probably going to mispronounce many of these Greek names, so I'd appreciate some leniency regarding that. With that, let's burn that dread. Yukari's persona is Ayo, a priestess of Hera who caught the eye of Zeus. Ayo resisted Zeus's seductions until she was driven away from her home by her father, at which point she would seek comfort in Zeus. When Hera went to investigate, Zeus turned into a cloud and turned Ayo into a cow. In some versions of this myth, her father would give her up to Zeus. Upon discovering her with Zeus, Hera would curse Ayo, turning her into a cow. Yukari's father is one of the scientists whose experimentations with Shadow would bring about the Dark Hour. Just as Ayo's whole life was defined by Zeus's lust, Yukari's whole life would be defined by her father's mistake and death. And just as how her father's actions would chase Ayo into Zeus's arms, her father's death would lead Yukari's mother to seek comfort in the arms of other men, leading to an estranged relationship between the two. Ayo would then wander the earth being stung by a gadfly. She would be driven mad by the stinging, leading her to wander across Europe and Asia, eventually reaching Egypt. Eventually she would return into being a human and marry the Egyptian king Telegonus. The Dark Hour continually haunts Yukari, just as how the gadfly would continuously sting Ayo when she was a cow. However, it is much more personal for Yukari knowing that the father she loves had a personal hand in creating the Dark Hour, just as Ayo's curse would be lifted when she reaches Egypt. Yukari joins the seas, believing the answer she seeks will be found there. Junpei's persona is Hermes, the herald of the gods. With his winged sandals, he is able to move freely between the worlds of the mortal and the divine. Just as Hermes can easily traverse between the two worlds, Junpei had little hesitation in joining the seas, partly for his excitement at the prospect of being a hero, partly for wanting to be away from his alcoholic father. Hermes plays a big role in the myth of Orpheus. One of the myths of Orpheus is that while Hermes invented the lyre, Orpheus is the one who perfected playing it. We can see how Junpei connects with this with his jealousy of the protagonists which he often masks with humor and friendliness. In addition, Hermes guided Orpheus to the underworld. In a less subtle metaphor, Junpei is one of the party members you bring with you when you first enter Tartarus. The Seas are only able to explore Tartarus because the protagonist and Junpei are there to reinforce the severely undermanned team. So because of the protagonist and Junpei, the Seas can finally enter the underworld. Hermes is a trickster god, the patron of thieves and travelers. He is often able to fool the gods. One example is when Hera tasked the hundred-eyed giant Argus Panoptes to guard Ayo who was cursed into the form of a cow. Hermes beheaded the giant, allowing Ayo to escape. Junpei often portrays himself as a happy-go-lucky guy, Mr. Easygoing. He often comments on the beauty of other women, but this is all a front for a very insecure young boy. He desires the admiration of his peers and to become a hero, leading to his jealousy of the protagonist. He genuinely desires love and to be loved while hiding it behind vulgarity and crassness. Hermes is also known as the Guide of Souls, leading them to the underworld. Because of her persona, Chidori knew the day she would die. She would curse her life and seek death. She has always felt that she has never belonged anywhere, even amongst her strega comrades. It was only after meeting Junpei that she would realize what she wanted to do with her life and what the meaning of her death would be. 
Junpei served as her guide to the afterlife. She faces death with neither fear nor detachment. She dies with no regret in her heart, having saved the one person she genuinely loved. Akihiko's persona is Polydeuces, or Pollux. Shinjiro's persona is Castor. These are the twin heroes that would make up the constellation of Gemini. The twins are children of Zeus. This leaves them with a unique nature in being both divine and not of the divine. In some myths, it is Polydeuces who is divine, while Castor is mortal. Polydeuces and Castor are among the Argonauts, heroes that join the hero Jason on his ship, the Argo. One of their adventures with the Argonauts involved Polydeuces defeating King Amicus of Berberisis in a boxing match. We can see how this reflects on Akihiko, who is the captain of the boxing team. Of the twins, Polydeuces is the more famous one, while Castor preferring to stay in the background. Similarly, Akihiko is very popular in school, while Shinjiro is just known as a delinquent. The twins are sibling to several sisters, all of whom they love dearly, including the twin sisters Helen and Clytemnestra. When Helen was kidnapped by Theseus, the twins set off to rescue her. While they did rescue their sister, they caused a lot of havoc in Attica and Athens, including kidnapping and enslaving Theseus' mother, Ethra. Shinjiro and Akihiko were close to Akihiko's little sister, Miki. Her death is what would motivate the two to seek power. Akihiko especially who would fixate on getting stronger. Just as Polydeuces and Castor had good intentions in saving their sister but very destructive methods, Akihiko and Shinjiro would join the seas with good intentions but with very self-destructive attitudes. The twins are renowned hunters and horsemen, but their brashness would lead to dire consequences not just for the twins but for their family as well. While visiting their uncle in Sparta, their uncle had to leave for Crete, so Helen was tasked to entertain the guests while he's away, which included the pair Lynceus and Idas, cousins to the siblings and fellow members of the Argonauts. Castor and Polydeuces had been feuding with the two cousins. They desired to exact revenge on the cousins for a slight they committed. But this slight was done in response to something the brothers had done prior. To exact their revenge, the twins left Helen alone with another guest, Paris, Prince of Troy. Paris would then kidnap Helen, which would lead to the events of the Trojan War. During the early days of Cis, Shinjiro's persona would go berserk, leading to the death of an innocent civilian the mother of Kenamada. Akihiko and Shinjiro, in their quest for power, allowed an innocent person to be killed. This event would greatly traumatize the two boys and dealt with it with very different ways. Akihiko would double down on his quest for power, seeking ways to make himself and his team stronger. Shinji would step away from the seas, living his life in anonymity and resorting to drugs to suppress his persona. While the two brothers were successful in exacting their revenge, it came at the cost of Castor's life. Castor did not share Polydeuces' divinity and would die a mortal. Polydeuces would allow his immortality to be shared with his dying brother, turning the two into the constellation of Gemini. On Shinji's funeral, Akihiko vows to continue this fight no longer focused on becoming stronger but instead on why he is fighting, to protect the people around him. He would carry Shinji's will so that Shinji and Miki could rest peacefully. Mitsuru's persona is Penthesilea, the queen of the Amazons. Penthesilea was renowned for her beauty, wisdom, and being a skilled warrior. These are traits that Mitsuru shares with her. Mitsuru is a skilled fencer, the student council president, and a striking, if unapproachable, beauty. Even at her young age, she is already helping her father run their company, a company that she will one day own as the heir to the Kurijo group. Penthesilea accidentally killed her sister Hippolyta on a hunting trip. Racked with guilt, she sails away with her Amazon warriors, seeking a warrior's death in the Trojan War. Similarly, the company of Mitsuru's family is responsible for the creation of the Dark Hour. Mitsuru feels responsibility for her family's transgression and works tirelessly to right this wrong. Penthesilea is sometimes portrayed as having arrived too late to aid Troy. By the time she and her warriors arrive, the Trojan army has been routed back to the city and its greatest son, Hector, has been killed by Achilles. Mitsuru had her doubts on whether destroying the Twelve Shadows would end the Dark Hour, but did not realize that Ikutsuki had been using them until it was too late. For this oversight, her father would be killed trying to protect her. Just how Penthesilea arrived too late to save Hector, Mitsuru's trust of Ikutsuki would lead to her father's death. Aegis' persona is Palladion. A Palladion or Palladium is an image or object where it is said to guarantee the safety of the city as long as the Palladium is watching over the city. The original Palladion is the Trojan Palladium, 
The wooden statue of Pallas Athena said to protect the city of Troy. During the Trojan War, it was stolen by Odysseus and Diomedes, which would herald the downfall of Troy. This reflects on Aegis as she is dedicated to the safety and protection of the protagonist for reasons she herself is not sure of. Just as the Palladium stands guard over Troy, Aegis, a mechanical creation of the Corrigia group, would safeguard the protagonist. As Ryoji reclaims his last missing pieces, he realizes what he is, the 13th Arcana, Death. Aegis would try to destroy Ryoji but would fail, leaving her in a state of disrepair. Just as the theft of the Trojan Palladium would herald the end of Troy, Aegis's defeat would signal the coming of the fall. Ken's persona is Nemesis. Nemesis is the goddess of retribution and vengeance. She is the avenger of crime and punisher of hubris. Ken's reason for joining seas are not just because he awakened to his persona. Ken wants to kill Shinjiro for revenge. Ken blames the death of his mother on Shinji, whose persona went berserk and accidentally killed her. To avoid the advances of Zeus, Nemesis would take on many forms to try and fool and escape him. Similarly, Ken hides his murderous intent by playing as a dutiful and respectful child to fool the other seas. Coincidentally, Nemesis' transformations did not help as she was raped by Zeus when she was a swan. In relation to this, Ken's good boy act never fooled Shinji who knew from the start what Ken wanted. If it would have satisfied the vengeful child, Shinji was going to allow him to take his revenge. Koromaru's persona is Cerberus. Cerberus is the three-headed dog that guards the gate of the underworld, never allowing the dead to leave. Similarly, Koromaru stands guard over the place where his master died, never allowing anyone to desecrate it, whether it be person or shadow. It is said that while Cerberus is descended from monsters, Cerberus is only doing his duty. Cerberus is not a malicious monster, but a faithful hound. Similarly, Koromaru is kind to most people and only vicious to those who means harm. Fuka's persona is Lucia or Saint Lucy. Lucia is known as the Saint of Eyes. When Lucia's marriage was arranged, she gave away her dowry to the poor. Upon learning of this, her betrothed revealed her as a Christian to the governor of Syracuse, Pasius. To make amends, she was ordered to make a sacrifice to the Roman Emperor's image. When she refused, she was sentenced to be defiled in a brothel. Just as Lucia was oppressed for her faith, Fuka is bullied for her shyness and her unconventional interests in technology. According to legend, when the guards came to take her away, she was so heavy that she could not be moved even by oxen. Bundles of wood was placed on her to burn her, but the wood would not catch fire. This seemingly divine intervention of Lucia mirrors how Fuka was able to survive inside Tartarus for several hours, where the rest of the deceased can barely handle one. Finally, she met her death with a sword through her throat. But before she died, Lucia would speak of prophecies foretelling the downfall of the Roman Emperor and the punishment of those that killed her. This angered Pasius that he ordered that her eyes be gouged out. Just as Lucia could see into the future, Fuka's persona allows her to see and analyze enemies. In addition, Fuka's skill with technology allows her to uncover some truths that were hidden from the seas. The video file that Yukari's father left had been heavily altered, but with Fuka's help, the video file was restored, allowing Yukari to hear the true message left behind by her father. Despite the guards' threats and violence against her, Lucia never cursed them. She clung strongly to her faith, regardless of consequence. Similarly, Fuka never sought retribution for the bullying that was done to her. She does not bear hatred in her heart and she is able to forgive the girls that bullied her, eventually forming a friendship with one of them. Chidori's persona is Medea. Medea was a priestess of Hecate, daughter of the king of Colchis. She is also a sorceress with powers of precognition. Similarly, because of her persona powers, Chidori knows when she will die causing her no end of grief. She can also use her persona powers outside of the Dark Hour. To anyone unaware of the Dark Hour, it would look like magic. After falling in love with Jason, Medea felt conflicted. She wanted to help him but doing so would betray her father. Eventually, she decides to help Jason and sails away with him, eventually becoming his wife. Likewise, Chidori would spend time with the Cease after she was captured, becoming close with Junpei. She would become conflicted between what she wanted and what Strega wanted. Unfortunately, Jason would decide to abandon Medea in favor of Glauki, Princess of Corinth. Just as Medea was betrayed by Jason, Chidori would be betrayed by Strega. In her despair and rage, Medea would kill Glauki, her father Creon, and the two sons she had with Jason. Chidori is also prone to violence when confronted with despair, but she inflicts it on herself instead. 
Medea would curse Jason for his oath-breaking to die a miserable death before fleeing. In an interesting subversion, Medea would go crazy because Jason betrays their love, but Chidori would go crazy because she falls in love with Junpei. Jin's persona is Moros, the embodiment of doom. Moros is the personification of destiny, a representation of death and suffering. If a mortal is fated to misfortune, whether that be death, injury, dishonor, or ruin, it is said that Moros is the one that leads them there. Jin is dedicated to Takaya's plan of summoning Nyx and bringing about the fall, sometimes more than Takaya himself as Jin has to keep Takaya focused before he gets distracted. Jin is bitter and angry at how his lifespan is shortened due to the Kirijo's experiment on him. As such, he wishes the whole world would share his miserable fate. Just as Moros creates the path towards doom, Jin desires to bring death to everyone in the world by bringing about the fall. Moros is said to be able to give people the ability to foresee their death. As Jin is defeated, he is swarmed by shadows. Instead of allowing the shadows to consume him, Jin instead chooses his own death using his own grenade. Takaya's persona is Hypnos, the personification of sleep. Hypnos is said to dwell in Erebos, a land of eternal darkness beyond the gates of the rising sun. The seas encounter Takaya mostly in the dark hour, which could be considered the land of eternal darkness. Hypnos is said to be a gentle god who helps humans in need. He is kind to humans since he owns humans for half of their lives, the part they spend sleeping. Takaya creates a cult that preys upon the despair of the people. He preaches how Nyx will be a savior to the people and how suffering will end with Nyx. In an interesting subversion, where Hypnos ends suffering by helping people, Takaya promises to his followers that suffering will end with the coming of a savior. The apathy syndrome turns its victim into a vegetative dreamlike state. They are early manifestations of the fall. The fall, an event where all of mankind will forfeit their will to live. This is what Takaya wishes to happen as he preaches about Nyx. As Hypnos takes care of humans while they are sleeping, Takaya wishes to bring the peace of sleep to everyone in the world by delivering them the peace of death that comes with the coming of Nyx. The protagonist's persona is Orpheus. In Greek mythology, Orpheus would descend to the underworld to save his wife Eurydice. Despite succeeding in the monumental task of persuading the rulers of the underworld, Hades and Persephone, Orpheus would still fail in his task. Orpheus succumbed to the one stipulation placed upon him to save his wife. As he was exiting the underworld, he looked back. The main character goes on a journey to try and end the Dark Hour. Despite defeating the 12 major shadows, the seas would still fail in this task. Orpheus is also a member of the Argonauts, but serving more of a musician rather than a warrior. He was able to protect the Argonauts from the music of the Sirens by playing his own music. The main character would have many adventures with the Seas members after joining them. And while the shadows they face are powerful, his unique power of the wild card would allow them to stand up against the shadows. To convince Hades and Persephone to allow his wife to leave the underworld, Orpheus moved them with a beautiful song from his lyre. Similarly, because the protagonist was a good friend to Phaedos and Ryoji, the Arcana of Death came to appreciate what a human life has to offer. Which is why Ryoji would offer to erase the memories of the Cease members of the Dark Hour to spare them the fear of waiting for the fall. Similar to how Orpheus was tasked to never look back, Ryoji would ask the main character to look away. By killing Ryoji, the main character and the rest of the seas would lose all memory of the Dark Hour, allowing them to live out their lives in peace and ignorance until the fall comes. In some versions of the myth, Orpheus exits the underworld and faces his wife Eurydice, unaware that she has not yet exited the cave of the underworld. Orpheus fails in his task in the very last moment, and Eurydice fades back into the underworld. In an interesting twist, at the end of Persona 3, Aegis realizes just what she wants to do with her life, spend the rest of it by the protagonist's side. But this realization comes too late as the protagonist dies in her arms. This is a bittersweet moment for Aegis, as she got to do what she wanted in life, even if it was just for a moment. It bears worth mentioning that the protagonist starts out not with one persona when he first awakens, but with two. So maybe there is one other person worth talking about. Ryoji's true form is the 13th Arcana, Death, which takes the form of the persona Thanatos. When Aegis is unable to defeat Death, 
It instead splits death into multiple pieces. One piece is sealed inside a young boy, the protagonist. Thanatos guides souls to the underworld, a responsibility he seemingly shares with the god Hermes. Some versions of his myth believe him to be an aspect of Hermes before breaking off from him to form his own being. As Pharos, his fractured being was bound to the protagonist. By slaying the full moon shadows, Pharos is able to gather his fragmented pieces back to him. In time, he is able to separate himself from the protagonist. In addition, as Ryoji, he shares many similarities with Junpei, who has the persona Hermes. Specifically, he shares some of Junpei's more perverted tendencies. Thanatos is the god of non-violent death. He is the bringer of eternal sleep, a peaceful end as opposed to the more violent death brought about by the gods and his siblings. We see this with Ryoji's offer to the seas to remove their memory of the Dark Hour. Ryoji had become close to the seas, but he knows that Nyx is inevitable and he does not want his friends to suffer with the knowledge that the fall is coming. By removing their memory of the Dark Hour, his friends can live out the rest of their time in peace. When the fall comes, it would be instantaneous and no one would feel it, sparing them any kind of pain. Even if it would cost him his life, Ryoji offers a peaceful end for his friends. Thanks for watching. Truth be told, this is still a surface level readings of these metaphors. There is a lot written on Greek mythology, and if there is something you would like to add, please write it down in the comments below. I'll have a part 2 on Persona 3, taking a look at the evolved Persona and perhaps some of the events of the FES storyline. If this interests you, consider subscribing, I'd really appreciate it. Until our paths cross again, see ya traveler.